Hello everyone, I'm Gary, Developer Operation Manager of Trade. Honestly, it was my very first try. I was on a fresh links project, and they just told Solo to be creative. It came back with four different designs on its own. So I was so impressed, and that ended up being my first demo. That's nice. What about you, Zach? I love the UI. This doesn't look like every other code editor that I kind of worked with. The context engine is really, really good. Okay. And Solo Coder, also fantastic at agentic edits. So I really like you can define your own sub-agent. Uh, traditionally, we've already seen ideas like row setting or um, tool calling, especially with MCP nowadays. But this is the first time you can encapsulate the roles mm -hmm. with the tools into a composable, reusable unit. It's like components and modular programming, but it's for AI coding this day. The reason that I love the sub-agents is encapsulates the context. With being able to compartmentalize like a 20-minute run into its own sub-agent is fantastic. I would say for me though, the thing I love most is definitely got to be the multiple tasks because it's all about concurrency for me. Compare with another AI developer tools, right? The first thing is the overall user interface. Mm -hmm. It just feels really AI native, but as someone with design background, what I really appreciate are those tiny little bit details. Right? Okay. The fact that you can give a sub-agent an identity with an icon or a generated avatar and watch Solo talking with those sub-agents, mm -hmm. that feels so human and so humane at the same time. What I like in Trey especially is the ability to actually change the UI out. Like yeah. if I want to use the embedded browser and the diff view, that's my main focal point. It feels like a terminal like a terminal agent, but with a really good AI native feeling user interface. Absolutely, um, as a quote unquote architect, mm -hmm. a large part of our job is not just about writing code. It's about mm -hmm. dog fooding what you build, sure. observing how users use it, mm -hmm. so I can build emphasis with users and iterate on the design, the APIs, right? And Solo, I found it's a perfect companion for all those jobs. Mm -hmm. Like you can see how it reads, react to the docs and how it responds to your API. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the most honest and accelerated feedback loop I've ever had in years. I think uh, another good point on there in terms of like responsiveness of it yeah. is the embedded browser. Okay. So this makes such a big difference because now anytime yeah. I'm building something, oh, does it actually run? What's the easiest way to do that? Mm -hmm. Launch the browser and check if there's any errors, check if there's any problems. I don't need to leave the IDE as much, which is, I mean, that's where I think you lose a lot of your productivity. A big thing I love about Solo is the context engine that it has as well. It has a good context understanding mm -hmm. and it's concurrent. So it doesn't matter how slow a model might take or how complex mm -hmm. a task is, I can do as many tasks as that I can manage in a sidebar, which is significantly more. So it's been a huge, huge boost for productivity. Totally. Uh -huh. <laughs> as humans, we often get intimidated but just looking at the sheer number of files or lines of code that you need to fix or migrate, right? But Solo doesn't have that psychological issue. I feel like it really helps shrink those seemingly large questions, mm -hmm. problems into the real complexity, the parts that you actually need human to look at and unblock AI to do work. AI is fantastic. Go find out what needs to be done. Do the research, tell me about it, and I don't need to dig through this. Immediately, the Solo Coder agent is really, really great for existing work. Get up right. to speed, understand what's going on in there, and then, you know, do things similar to how I would do them. And it does a very good job of understanding existing code bases. Mm. And my conviction is that we should push for more open source and push for cross-platform technologies like links, um, so one day we can extend AI coding to every platform much, much faster. I would say that's probably the biggest shift we're gonna see is those soft skills are gonna take more priority <laughs> over technical skills. You still need knowledge. I think you can't replace knowledge or context. How do you want it to work? Because the AIs at the end of the day are only as good as the person driving them. 
So like architect, I think is a good scenario of this. You need to have a really good understanding of the picture of how this thing's gonna function, what you want it to do. Human skills are coming back <laughs> into coding as you know, something that's gonna be very helpful. So I think that's where we'll see the, sh the, the trend shift. Those who are really good with these AI tools are most likely gonna have really strong soft skills with good technical grounding. Mm. I, I love this perspective. Thank you so much for sharing all the insights. When I think of Tracella, I think of uh, freedom. Freedom. It gives me a lot of freedom to be creative, to explore new ideas, to essentially have mini Zacks running around in the code base that aren't pulling away from whatever my main focus is. Okay, what about you? For me, it's more like solo keeps the fun part of coding. It takes away the boring part so we can spend Ooh, more time yeah. on interesting bits. That's, that's actually a brilliant way. It takes away everything. That's such a great way to put it. Everything I don't want to do, Solo does. Yeah, yeah I think that's all. Let's uh, see what Solo can go next. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah.